Ayla V here with what's going to be the first of several videos about making fleece cage liners. I know I already did one video on this subject, but a couple people were asking me questions on Etsy and on the guinea pig cages forum, so I decided to do a couple more in-depth videos. I'm, it's looking like it's going to end up like three, so the first video, which is this one, is going to be about planning and about cutting your fabric and getting your fabric. Um, in terms of planning, the first thing that you need to do is know what size your cage is. Now, for this video, I'm going to be sewing an order of 2x3 cage liners. I also have a lot of Midwest cage liners. Usually those are the two sizes that I get in my orders. But someone also asked me about 2x6s, so I'm going to be going over that as well. If your cage is a different size, then you'll still be able to use this information to figure out what's best for your cage. Okay? Uh, starting off, my neighbors are being loud, sorry. Um, starting off with the Midwest cage. I live in a great apartment complex. Starting out with the Midwest cage, most Midwest, ca actually all Midwest cages are 24 inches by 48 inches unless you're adding multiple cages together. Um, whenever you're sewing, you're going to want to add 5% for shrink with fleece. And that comes out to being 25 and a quarter by 50 and a half. So I round up a little bit and cut to 26 by 51. That way I have some seam allowance. Now, normally I'll actually cut off a little bit more than that because I'm not good at sewing right on the edge of the fabric. But if you're really skilled with sewing, then you can cut it to 26 by 51. And if you're not so skilled, you might want to cut it more like 28 by 53. For a two by three grid, each grid on a normal CNC cage is 14 inches, so that comes out to 28 by 42. It's not 2 foot by 3 foot because each grid isn't exactly a foot. Adding your 5% and then rounding up a little bit, you're going to, if you're skilled, you're going to cut to 30 by 45. But if you're not that great at sewing right along the edge, you're going to cut to about 32 by 47. And last for 2 by 6, there's actually two ways you can do this and I'll get to that in a sec. But once you add your 5%, you're going to end up, if you're skilled, cutting it to 30 by 89. And if you're not that skilled, you're going to end up cutting it to 32 by 91. Most fleece, unless you're buying extra wide fleece or a specialty brand of fleece, is 60 inches wide from selvage to selvage. That being said, that doesn't mean that all 60 inches are usable. Sometimes you'll get some really wide selvages where even though it's 60 inches wide, not all 60 inches might not be usable. Consider it more like 58, 56, depending on the brand. Now, if you're doing a Midwest cage liner, 48 inches is definitely less than 60. No matter how big your selvage is, it's not going to be taking off more than a foot of fabric. So you can get away with a Midwest cage, cutting it to 26 inches. Like I said, if you're more experienced, you probably want to go up to, or if you're less experienced, you probably want to go up to 28 inches just to give yourself some wiggle room so that you don't have to sew right on the seam or right on the edge where you cut. I'm good at talking. With a 2 by 3 grid, same concept. 42 is way less than 60. So once you get past everything, you're going to be cutting between a 30 or a 32 by 45. Do that 45 cut along the side here where it's already 60 inches. You can't get away from that. That way you only have to cut between 30 and 32 inches of fabric, which is less than a yard. That, believe it or not, that saves you a lot of money. It doesn't seem like a lot. You know, you go to the store and you say, oh, well, it's $6 a yard, or oh, well, it's $8 a yard. But that adds up, especially when you're getting more than one yard, because it's amazing how fast the price rises and also how fast it drops. Let's say, for example, that you do only need the 32 inches. Well... 32 out of 36 because there's 36 inches in a yard. Let's say that that fabric is $9 a yard. That takes that from $9 down to $8. So you can get some pretty significant savings by having them cut off the exact or close to the exact amount of fabric that you need. Going for a 2x6, like I said, this one's a little bit tricky because you're going to actually need... 89 is not less than 60, so you're going to have your small edge, your 30 inch, up against the 60, which is not the best idea, because then you end up needing 89 to 91 inches of fabric. 
that's two and a half, if not three yards. Let me math that. Yeah, that comes out two and a half yards, not including a little bit of wiggle room for when you sew. So um, it's a lot cheaper in the long run to instead make two two by three pieces and then just sew them together in the middle. It'll save you a ton of money to do it that way because you're not gonna have all this waste fabric. So you're going to need a top fleece, an absorbent layer, and a bottom layer. Generally, the top layer is printed and the bottom layer is not. You could certainly have both sides printed. You could certainly have both sides plain. You can even get, they make fleece with little, like, it looks, it looks kind of like bubble wrap. It's cool, it's textured. I have one liner for myself that's like that. You guys might have seen it in previous videos. But the absorbent layer is what I'm going to talk about next for prep work because you need to decide what you want to use. I like to use cotton batting. It's thin. It's really easy to sew with. But it can be a little expensive. I buy it in bulk so that it's not expensive. Um, I think Joanne sells it for like $10 a yard, which is crazy because I only pay $7 a yard when I buy it in bulk. You could get a U-Haul pad. The reason I don't sew with U-Haul pads, even though they're pretty much the same thing, they're a little bit thicker. Um, they're made of denim cotton instead of just plain undyed, unused cotton, which I like the fact that it's not dyed and anything like that. Now, that's not to say that it's bad for your animals. If anything, U-Haul pad is one of the best things to use in liners. It's just not my, not my cup of tea. You could use towels without edges. The reason I say without edges is because you're going to have to, almost guaranteed, you're going to have to sew multiple towels together to get whatever size you need for your cage liner. And those rolled edges or seamed edges on a towel are so thick, they're nearly impossible to sew through. So it's a lot easier for you and a lot easier on your sewing machine if you just cut those edges off first before you sew the towels together and before you sew the liners because two layers of fleece and then the towel edge is not a good combination. And the last thing you can use is terry cloth. Now, terry cloth and towels, towels are made of terry cloth. Um, you can buy just plain old terry cloth at Joann's. You can even buy printed terry cloth, like pretty stuff. Um, my first few cage liners that I made for myself, I used terry cloth. I don't like to use it because it's not as absorbent as the cotton or the U-Haul. Cotton and U-Haul absorb three times as much pee and poo before they start to get yucky and gross. So when in doubt, go with cotton or U-Haul. But if you have a ton of spare towels laying around, then by all means. And another thing, terry cloth is actually cheaper than towels. If you go out and you buy terry cloth, I it's really expensive. It's like $10 a yard. Um, but it's one solid piece. And towels are just as expensive, if not more. You can buy like $50 towels if you really want to. I guarantee it. Go on Amazon and see what towels cost for a full-sized uh, bath sheet. It's ridiculous how much towels cost when they're just terry cloth with a hem on it. Sorry, I like to ramble. Just one more thing before we cut some fabric. When you're going to go buy your fabric, blizzard fleece and anti-pill fleece are okay to use. Just be aware that they have chemicals on them that will stop them from wicking away liquids like pee and water. So when it comes to fleece, cheaper is better. No sew fleece throws. You can get those at Joann's or you can get other like blanket kits. They're fine to use by all means. Just once again, be prepared. Pretty much no matter what kind of fleece you buy, you're going to end up having to wash it a couple times before you can use it. Absorbent layer, right here. I'm going to spread it open so that I'm not cutting two pieces, so that I'm only cutting one. Then I'm gonna go ahead and cut. 